<clears throat> it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Roshi Nategi. Um, I'm going to begin with a, a brief apology because I'm sure that even within the, if I use the whole five minutes, I would not come close to doing her accomplishments justice. So I'm going to do what I can. So uh, Roshi joined Purdue in 2015 following the completion of her PhD and a subsequent postdoc, both in the Department of Environmental Health and Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, she had previously received a, a master's in engineering from Imperial College London in mechanical engineering. Uh, at Purdue, she leads the laboratory for advancing sustainable critical infrastructure. Roshi develops data-centric interdisciplinary approaches to using advanced analytical techniques for modeling risk and resilience of critical infrastructure across spatio-temporal scales, especially as applied to energy infrastructure. In other words, she's working to build tools and methods to understand and improve complex infrastructure systems in the face of significant uncertainty from events such as natural disasters or the ongoing effects of climate change. One of the key things to note in regards to her career is that she's deeply focused on putting her research to work, so to speak. Models developed as part of her research program are being used by energy utility companies and federal agencies. And her research has also been featured in the national news. She's also received multiple best paper awards from organizations such as IEEE and the International Society for Risk Analysis, the later being an organization that she's very heavily involved with. Within the school, uh, and an area close to my heart, teaching, she's been integral in teaching uh, one of our core sophomore classes, IE 330 in uh, statistical modeling, and has developed multiple graduate level courses on predictive modeling, risk analytics, energy systems management, and climate modeling. Uh, especially under extreme um, weather events. Her graduate level courses have frequently been cross-listed with uh, environmental and ecological engineering and earth atmospheric and planetary sciences. So further evidence of her interdisciplinarity, um, which is pretty awesome. We've also, she's also been an exceptional mentor to her graduate students and postdocs with a special emphasis on effective mentoring of other female uh, engineers and scientists, uh, most of which have gone on to faculty positions. Uh, which is exceptional uh, and was recognized uh, through the uh, Peru IEGSO. Uh, she was the inaugural recipient of the IE Outstanding Graduate Mentor Award in 2016. Uh, presently, Roshi is uh, not here. We miss her greatly in Grissom, but she's uh, serving as a AAAS Science and Technology Policy Fellow with the U.S. Department of Energy. It's an honor to have uh, colleagues such as Roshi as a part of the Purdue IE family. Uh, and so without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to her. And uh, I would also like to say congratulations to the other uh, awardees on behalf of the school. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Pat. I really appreciate the very kind uh, introduction. Um, so I am keeping the talk pretty um, informal, I'm just sharing my, my story so that you'll see a lot of uh, pictures, basically starting with a picture of me running. Uh, something I love doing, which I let go of a little bit during early years at Purdue when I'm trying to ramp it back up again. But, uh, but I'm showing this picture because of the logo that you see on my running shirt, which is the map of the country that I was born in, Iran, uh, which, as you know, some people in the U.S. pronounce as Iran. So it kind of makes it a appropriate maybe uh, logo for running shirts. I was born in um, Tehran, the capital uh, of Iran. And I'm just throwing a picture because uh, sometimes people have an image of a deserty like place, um, but we actually have uh, very pretty high mountains with great powder um, snow for skiing for those who might be interested. Um, I left Iran when I was 16 uh, to do my A-levels and then pursue my undergraduate degrees at Imperial College London. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I majored in mechanical engineering and in my final year, um, I took a course on energy systems, which sort of um, allowed me to learn about the impact of our energy system on global climate change. And that was that kind of created an aha moment for me, uh, motivated me that, yeah, this is where I want to spend my uh, my professional uh, life. Um, and I, yeah, unlike many of my peers uh, at a time who joined management consulting or car manufacturing companies, I came here to the U.S. to uh, pursue my graduate degree at Hopkins. 
um, yeah, that's a it's a very unique department uh, that I joined. Um, they're very interdisciplinary in their focus, and they changed names. Uh, so uh, it, at the time when I joined, it was called Geography and Environmental Engineering. But as uh, Patrick kindly uh, reminded us, it's now Environmental Health and Engineering. Either way, I got to work with really great people, and I was focusing on modeling the impact of uh, hurricanes and reliability and resilience of coastal power distribution systems. Uh, but the, towards the end of my PhD, uh, there was a really amazing opportunity um, available at, at National Science Foundation through their SEAS program, Science Engineering Education for Sustainability, which basically allowed early career like research recent uh, PhD grants to be the sole PI of uh, you know of the grants. Um, so I wrote a 15 page, you know, regular uh, NSF proposal on sustainable energy infrastructure planning, thankfully it was funded, which allowed me to continue being aff affiliated at Hopkins, uh, was, uh, you know, working with lots of interdisciplinary centers, teaching courses like sustainability and uh, sustainability science, predictive modeling, statistical computing, many of which I extended and uh, offered at Purdue as well but also allowed me to join research for the, Resources for the Future as a research scientist. For those who might not be familiar with uh, uh, Resources for the Future, they do really great work. It's a think tank, basically, and that uh, focuses on modeling a lot of really interesting things, including the energy system. And um, that was a really wonderful experience. It allowed me to expand my uh, network of interdisciplinary collaborators, but also um, learn the barriers and benefits of working in large interdisciplinary teams, which has kind of shaped um, the way we do research in my lab. Um, and, uh, you know, towards the end of the CS fellowship, of course, I started looking for an academic career. And uh, thankfully, uh, Purdue, uh, you know, uh, was a great fit for, for what I was pursuing at the time. Uh, so I joined the industrial engineering department now. You might be thinking, wow, she's been hopping from one department to another, mechanical, environmental, and then industrial. But in fact, the theme of my research interest has actually um, stayed pretty consistent through time. Um, so I'm, I unfortunately haven't included a lot of technical details of uh, my lab's work. I, I encourage you to take a look at uh, uh, my website if your time allows. But uh, essentially, I'm interested in looking at the impact of extreme weather and climate events on infrastructure both in near term and long term under uh, global climate change. And I, I find this area fascinating and important, as you might say, uh, hey, you're biased, of course, but just to motivate it a bit further, I wanna draw your attention to um, NOAA's National Climatic Data Center, um, which produces a lot of really great statistics. So I invite you to visit their website, but this is one of the, the, the plots that you can get that shows the number of billion dollar weather and climate disasters. So for an event to show up on this, uh, on this graph, of an event should have costed at least a billion dollar or more. I, I want to show this because as part of my motivating my talk back when I was interviewing at Purdue in 2014, I was showing this because I've done some work uh, for 2011. That's the, the orange line that was like the worst on record. Then I continued showing it because unfortunately then 2016 was terrible and then 2017 surpassed it. And look at when we are in 2020. So these are, there are definitely some um, foundational challenges that require cross-disciplinary efforts um, to, to ensure that uh, we, we remain more resilient um, under extreme climate events and climate change. Um, so I've had um, the honor of working with really wonderful collaborators at, uh, at IE, but I also want to acknowledge the wonderful resources available at Purdue, um, notably uh, Purdue Climate Change Research Center and the Center for the Environment, that have really um, impacted my career trajectory, not just in terms of providing seed fundings, which then allowed me to pursue um, externally, uh, you know, federal funded, uh, sorry, federal funding, uh, but also exposing me to some really great collaborators that also shaped um, my research program and allowing for, you know, stakeholder engagements. I had a lot of fun participating in Indiana Climate Change Impact Assessment. Uh, I found the work to be very meaningful and uh, it opened lots of uh, new questions and research uh, opportunities for us. Um, and as part of the uh, professionals, you know, beyond Purdue, I'm in, involved in uh, a few different professional societies, but as uh, Pat kindly mentioned, Society for Risk Analysis is what I'm most involved with. And if you guys don't know about it, I encourage you to take a look. Uh, there's some really great work being done there. 
I recently got elected as a council member, which is a councillor, which uh, you know is the governing uh, governing body of the society. Um, and I'm chairing the science committee and co-chairing the education committee. And in part of the science committee, we are um, uh, we are thinking deeply about the science policy interface. And I want to talk about it a little bit more because that has just sort of motivated where I am now. Um, should I talk about it a little bit? Um, uh, and you know, the flagship journal of uh, Society for Risk Analysis is. Uh, the Journal of Risk Analysis. I'm currently uh, the area editor uh, for the mathematical modeling track. So putting a shameless plug in there. So if you have work that fits the scope, I'd love to see your contribution. Um, uh, but of course, uh, as we know, um, external, uh, you know, federal uh, funding is really integral to having a well-functioning research, oh, well, uh, good, well, uh, you know, to, to run your research program effectively, essentially. Um, but I wanted to highlight my uh, my recent experience with NSF i which was really different to any other, um, you know, NSF experience that I had. Um, and uh, again, you might be thinking, wow, she's switching gears a little bit. But um, I have been doing a lot of soul searching over the past year or two uh, about how to increase our research impact. The nature of my, uh, my research is pretty applied. Um, and it seems like, you know, uh, getting... Uh, Good publications and getting news minutes, coverage. Man. Oh, okay. I'm I'm gonna. Uh, yep. So I'm looking at creative ways of uh, seeing how we can uh, transfer some of the technology that we are developing that can have societal impact. Um, and uh, you know, having a more uh, you know sort of impact the policy making arena as well, which sort of motivated where I am now. Um, I'm currently on research leave uh, at the Department of Energy as part of the AAAS program, uh, learning not only about the dynamics on the DOE, which is very eye-opening and I'm happy to talk about more, but as part of tri AAAS, I'm learning about the complex legislative process uh, in the federal government, which is really interesting. Um, if you asked me the source of all my joy over the past six years, I would say working with exceptional students. I know I'm running short of time, but I really want to give a shout out to my exceptional um, students. Um, so Renee um, uh, was my first uh, PhD grad, um, just uh, accepted a, a tenure track uh, faculty position at Penn State. Um, ben, who's uh, done really amazing work, and um, when he graduated, he's now at Stanford doing a postdoc and uh, getting lots of really great interviews. And um, we just learned that his last um, chapter of his PhD dissertation got accepted for um, publication in nature, commun nature Communications. So yay, Ben. Um, and Debs, who started really strong, actually her first publication was in Nature Communications. She's, she's done really amazing work. Um, and she did an internship in Capital One. They made her an offer she couldn't decline. So now she's a data scientist there. Um, just giving a shout out uh, because I know I'm running out of time. So I can't uh, go in much detail about the wonderful work that uh, Scienti is doing as an assistant prof um, at uh, University of Buffalo uh, and uh, Negin at University of Virginia, uh, my former postdocs. And then, of course, my current PhD students, I'm learning so much from them. And a quick shout out to uh, my master's students um, who are all playing big as data scientists in, um, in tech. Um, of course, there are many more faces of master's students without, um, uh, without thesis and undergraduate students, but 10 minutes in is awfully short. But seriously, uh, I don't know what I did to be so lucky to work with such amazing students, and I'm forever grateful for that. And finally, I want to share my two cents because I had um, early career and uh, graduate students in mind as I was presenting, as I was reflecting back to my past six years. And I know, um, yeah, the first thing I want to highlight is uh, having uh, a support, a strong um, support network. And that's not just social support, but like mentoring. And that's not necessarily just formal mentoring, but informal mentoring that you might get from your peers um, or people even slightly senior to you or much more senior to you. Um, and uh, I think the academic route can get really difficult at times. Um, and yeah, I think I, I, I'm very indebted to the great support network that I had. And I, I just wanna give two shout outs to Susan Hunter and uh, Steve Landry um, who have had an incredible, they, they've just um, been incredible during some really tough times during, uh, during this journey. Um, and I'm very grateful uh, for the support I received. And actually, speaking of uh, social support, the next speakers, uh, I, I just had to, sorry, Sadek, uh, if 
um, I'm digressing, but Sadaq and wife, uh, his wife uh, Arazu have been such great friends. And honestly, we've been so blessed with uh, having so many wonderful colleagues and friends uh, at Purdue who've just made the life so much more memorable. And the last one, I know that I'm, uh, I've run out of time, is kind of yeah. uh, maybe an advice uh, to me. Uh, uh, I can talk about it during q and I don't have to okay. talk about balance. Uh, if you if you do have questions, please uh, put them in the chat. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Roshi. Uh, I, I'm a, a new assistant professor from industrial engineering. Uh, oh. Yeah, so <laughs> great to hear. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Great to uh, hear your story. And uh, you mentioned uh, your research uh, is more on the applied side. Uh, so the same situation uh, on, on me, uh, I, my research is also more kind of applied side. So, uh, but I figured out uh, it may be difficult to uh, apply like fundamental research funding from NSF, but I do see uh, you received uh, multiple funding from NSF. So do you have any uh, suggestions or tips uh, for those uh, for, for, for the work, like a more applied side uh, research to apply like NSF funding? Do you have any tips on that? Um, Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, why don't we follow up? Because I don't want to give a, the, I, I can't find the short answer to that. Um, and actually, um, you know, NSF is m moving a lot towards convergence research, right? So there's a lot of uh, motivation uh, to to place funding um, on type of research that addresses foundational issues, right? Uh, it's not incremental in nature, but has um, uh, deep applications. Uh, but I think maybe knowing your, so actually NSF has been the primary source of my funding. And I know of uh, a lot of really great programs that support interdisciplinary um, research. And I would love to follow up with you and pass on anything that I've learned over the years. And welcome again. Sorry, I, yeah, uh, I've been away from campus and I wasn't aware <laughs> uh, of you joining. Roshi, we have uh, Aunt Susan uh, put a question okay. in the chat. Uh, I'm wondering if you would be able to share more about your current AAAS position and any insights or things you have learned. Um, yeah, absolutely. So this has been... Um, the experience has been more interesting than I anticipated. Um, so the way uh, the, the AAAS is structured is that you get placed within an office, uh, basically, uh, that kind of of your choosing. I mean, there's an interview process, but, uh, but really it's uh, shaped by your interest. Um, so as part of that, uh, as part of a fellow, you get to, um, you have a lot of flexibility of uh, what you contribute to. So, so far I'm sort of learning the ropes, but I, I participate in uh, the interactions of, uh, of DOE with uh, national labs, right? And then at the same time, I learn of the inner workings of how they put uh, through the uh, funding calls. And then learning of the dynamics or politics of even between sub offices within a, a directorate, a DOE. So it's a lot of things that I would have never, and I, I'm happy to share more details um, uh, a little bit later. So th this is the, the DOE side was been, has been really eye-opening. Uh, and I, I was pretty intentional about not going to an agency that I knew a bit more about. Uh, DOE has always been a black box for me. Um, so this has been interesting, but in parallel, uh, through AAAS, we get 20% um, time for professional development, which essentially what it means is that we get lots of trainings about how the government works, uh, the, the, the legislative process, the budgeting process, which is way more complex than I, I knew. I knew I knew very little about the government, but um, it's, yeah, it's been enlightening in the fact that, yeah, I, um, I didn't know how, how little I knew and how complicated the whole working is. So um, I'm still learning, uh, but so far it's been really great. Um, um, and uh, yeah, the other interesting part is that I, uh, so AAAS uh, gear is uh, very well advertised for uh, early career um, people, but there's actually a good number of academics. So the other person in my cohort is um, a full professor at uh, UT Austin. And we were talking about the steep learning curve because everything in the government seems to be different. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've had a really positive experience so far and I'm happy to uh, share more details with anybody who might be interested afterwards. We do have time for a couple more questions. Um, I guess I'll ask a quick one. Uh, how have you been able to maintain balance? Uh, 
for the first few years? <laughs> Yeah, that's the part that I wanted to say to me, balance is myth. <laughs> um, I have not been able to, to do that. But what I, one thing I wanted to say, as, as I was saying, like I have uh, early career people uh, in mind, but also myself in mind, is that when I talk to a lot of academics, including and especially me, as we can be very goal oriented and want to get certain things done and think about other equally important things like our health later. Uh, the problem is when we neglect our uh, emotional and physical health, um, it actually has uh, long-term effects that are not positive for our research trajectory. I try to remind myself, I didn't do a good job of it last year, uh, but I, I'm just hoping that's something we all keep in mind. I think I'm getting the hand from the college uh, to move on, although we did have a hand raised from Professor Artikani, so... Um, so I want to give a shout out to Arezu. So Arezu and Sadeh have been a great friends. So Arezu, I'll follow up with you later. Uh, thanks for participating. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for um, everybody for, um, uh, for this wonderful opportunity. And again, a, a second thanks to Susan. You know how, uh, how grateful I've been. Great. Thank you, Rishi, for a great um, presentation and uh, congratulations on your accomplishments. What I was going to ask is that... Um, um, part of the recent discussions and some of the larger uh, funding opportunities that are um, becoming available, uh, one, for example, area that is of interest for NSF is climate change. If Purdue wants to be um, a leader in that um, platform, what are the um, expertise that uh, you think are critical that we are missing at the moment? Oh, wow, that's a very profound um, uh, question, Arzu. I actually, um, I mean, I've been part of the, uh, some of the brainstorming as uh, in PCSARC as people were uh, trying to think through these big calls that are going to come out, not necessarily out of NSF, but lots of other different agencies related to climate resilience. Um, and, I, and I think we do have a lot of uh, in-house expertise. Um, and I, I love the fact that our interdisciplinary centers uh, facilitate uh, these discussion talks. I think, um, I think maybe creating bandwidth for for professors to to invest time to meet ahead of time to have a you know a, a coherent uh, maybe proposal for some of the calls that are coming online uh, might be key, and that's something that has been discussed. So I'm not talking about necessarily expertise. I'll have to think about that a little bit and maybe follow up. But I I. I do know that we have uh, a wide range of expertise, right? Because at the interface of uh, behavioral science, climate science, and engineering, um, I, but I do think uh, maybe um, finding bandwidth for, for those experts to get together uh, and generate something that is uh, truly interdisciplinary and convergent might be key. Uh, but that's a great question and I'm not sure I gave you a coherent answer. Thank you. But thank I should you, think Rishi. about it and follow up later. Thanks. Well, thank you. Once again, congratulations, Roshi. Um, Thank you, Pat. Good to see you again. And, Great uh, to see you. and congratulations again to all of the other uh, associate professors being uh, honored today.